you know, the, the problem in identifying all the patients at risk for sudden death is uh, something which, which remains a big problem for us in this country. Uh, we have uh, lots of information. We still need to get uh, more information about who the patients are at risk. Um, that's just one part of it, though. The other part, is, of course, is prevention. So, so much of what we're dealing with is preventable. And so much of what we're going to be seeing in the future with the next wave of the cardiovascular epidemic is also preventable. So I think we have two or three things we need to be focusing on. Uh, one are the evolu evolving and the evolution of new diagnostic techniques to identify who the individuals are who are really at high risk uh, and targeting those people with uh, not only good diagnostic tests but also very aggressive health messages about uh, getting those appropriate tests done as well as managing the risk factors. We also need to be doing much more on a population-based front of getting our health messages across. Uh, very few people recognize their risk factors. Many, very few people understand that cardiovascular disease is the leading cause of death in this country, particularly true among women, particularly true among our racial and ethnic minorities who just are not getting these health messages uh, uh, as well. Um, and in some cases, uh, not getting our messages out to physicians. You know, what, what are the uh, uh, important risk factors to be focusing on? Which patients are candidates for not only blood pressure control, but also statins? Uh, which patients should have more than just a lipid test, but also perhaps a CRP or homocysteine? to uh, identify if they have uh, a higher risk that might be identified from uh, standard risk factors. We have a lot of work to do. Um, I, don't think, I don't think it's uh, insurmountable, and the fact that we have not made substantial gains in pre-hospital mortality, I don't think should uh, stop us in uh, continuing to move forward. The other area we need to work on, too, is on the uh, advocacy side, on the, on the uh, legislative side. We need more automatic external defibrillators in public places. Uh, the statistics where I live in Chicago make the point very, very clearly. If you want to have a cardiac arrest in Chicago, you have it at O'Hare or Midway Airports where we have uh, AEDs in place. The cardiac arrest uh, uh, survival rate at the airports in Chicago is 75%. Remain alive to get to the hospital. Now, the subsequent mortality in the hospital is, is a different issue, which we need to address too. But in downtown Chicago, if one has a cardiac arrest, the uh, survival rate is 7%. So there's a tenfold increase in survival just by having AEDs nearby. So we need to do this uh, uh, in all of the major metropolitan areas and large public buildings and sports stadiums. We need to be talking about rural AED delivery. Uh, police cars and communities should have AEDs. Uh, they're usually the first responders. This is true in small communities as well as in large cities. So I think we have an enormous amount of work to do, both in public education and advocacy and in uh, research into finding uh, the correct uh, patients to study intensively and to develop the new diagnostic tests.